I love 70s movies. It was the era that I was born in. It was the era that I have the vague memory of being alive in. So watching media from that decade helps kind of like fill in my gaps in memory and help me be more aware of the world that was what the world was like when I first started breathing and seeing and hearing and tasting and all of that stuff. So when I see a film from the 70s handed to me on Blu-ray from Arrow Home Video, like the one I'm talking about right now, that I've never even heard of, it's kind of exciting. So what we have to talk about today is Fear is the Key from 1972. This is based on an Alistair MacLean novel who wrote a lot of espionage adventure novels in this period and period before this, and uh, directed by Michael Tuckner, who's a name that I wasn't aware of, stars Barry Newman, only the year after he was in Vanishing Point, and I love Vanishing Point, so this is, uh, we'll get back to that. Uh, Susie Kendall, who had just made Dario Argento's Bird of the Crystal Plumage a year or two before this. John Vernon, who would go on to be most famous for Dean Warmer in Animal House, but had done a lot of things. Dolph Sweet, Dolph Sweet, who would go on to be, uh, the, I can't remember his name, the chief, I think, on Give Me a Break, which is what I knew him as as a kid. And Ben Kingsley in his first uh, feature film role as a bad guy with hair or more hair than we're used to seeing Ben Kingsley have. So the story here goes a little something like this. It's 105 minutes long. It was a Paramount release. So I, that's always a surprise for me, too, when we're doing... Uh, Arrow video stuff. Arrow, I always thought of as this company that put out a lot of weird, obscure, horror, Euro trash, Euro cult, indie kind of movies. And it's always interesting to see them dip into a studio vault and release a film that a studio probably doesn't think they can sell a lot of copies of because it's too obscure or it's too niche or it's too weird or whatever. And bless Arrow for digging up stuff. Bless all the studios, but Arrow especially for digging up stuff like this. So uh, before I get into the story, it has English SDH subtitles. If you want to, if you are deaf or hard of hearing and you want to get the subtitles that show you everything everybody's saying and what the sounds on screen are and all that. It has that. I believe it's just the original uh, mono audio. It looks gorgeous. It looks really good. And uh, great funky score by Roy Budd, who did a lot of great scenes. He, he's known for stuff like uh, uh, Get Carter and The Stone Killer. And for a while, I was collecting just like any Roy Budd soundtracks I could find. <laughs> this one's really good. And uh, it goes a little something like this. Film opens. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. Film opens and Barry Newman is at this shack somewhere and he's on a radio and he's going like a military radio and he's going back and forth with somebody who's on a plane and uh, the plane is, it sounds like the plane is like shot down and crashes and he's shocked because people he cares about are on this plane. Flash forward X number of years and Barry Newman is somewhere in the American South driving a, a decent kind of muscle car if I recall and looking for trouble, basically. He doesn't care about anyone or anything. He rolls into a little gas station. He's giving everybody lip. They're not going to serve him alcohol, hard liquor on a Sunday. He doesn't care. He takes it for himself. The police are called, and it leads to, ultimately, Barry Newman taking Susie Kendall as a hostage, hopping in a red muscle car, and just hauling ass. And it gives you what you want from Barry Newman in a muscle car. There is a 20-minute, seriously, car chase in this movie that is just, uh, it's great. Like, I was watching this movie, and I, my jaw was hanging open. I'm like, I had no idea this was going to be like this, and um, I'm, I'm all for this. I'm like, this is exactly, and I said when we were watching it, if this is all this movie is, if this movie is a 90-minute car chase like the original Gone in 60 Seconds, I'm good with that. I'm good. This movie doesn't do that, but it gives you... Dare I say one of the great car chases of the 70s? Maybe. There's a lot of great ones, but this, it's really good. And the stunt team that was put together to do this almost immediately went on to do Live and Let Die, the Bond film, shot in vaguely the same part of the country. So it's, and, and they say in the commentary, maybe they even sort of reused some of the stunts or, or ideas they came up with for this movie for that, but it's really good. It's like edge of your, it's white knuckle, edge of your seat, Automotive mayhem, 70s automotive mayhem. So I'm going to say up front, this movie is worth seeing just for that. Even if you don't like where the rest of this movie goes, it has that car chase. And and ultimately for me, I'm like, I'm keeping this movie because if I ever want to see that car chase, it go. I just pop that thing and hit play and I'm going to get that car chase again. And I'm going to show friends that car chase because it's just this wonderful self-contained 20 minutes of vehicular mayhem. So the way the film ultimately goes the, really the bulk of what the movie is, is that uh, Barry Newman is uh, ultimately held hostage 
by Susie Kendall's father and a business associate because they know he has this special set of skills as a salvage, underwater salvage operator. And there is something underwater that these guys want to get. And Newman uh, plays both ends against the middle, shall we say. So it's, it's interesting. It ultimately, to me, um, becomes less interesting as it goes on. And I don't know if, I, th I think part of it is it's something that would have worked better in a book than on screen. And that happens a lot with a lot of those big pulpy 60s, 70s espionage and adventure novels. A lot of these authors who had great success in writing these novels, the movies just never quite worked as well. Clive Cussler is one, you know, he wrote books for decades and they were bestsellers, these big thick books and, uh, you know, macho beach reads or whatever you want to call them. And so few of those films ever really were successful or really quite worked or really are remembered by anybody, even though they were tried a bunch of times. So this movie is kind of like that. It, it, it has that amazing chase scene and a great score and some interesting moments and some fun moments, but it kind of gets bogged down in that last half or third. And when Barry Newman's plot is fully unveiled, it's, it's kind of neat, but it's also just really talky, which is kind of a British thing. I love British films. I love British cinema. But a lot of times British films will take, will start off with like a cool idea and get bogged down with just a lot of people in rooms talking. And that's kind of for me what this did. Also, it deals with the underwater thing. And I feel like a lot of movies are, it's really hard to make underwater exciting. This movie isn't really heavily about underwater, but it's kind of got that going on. So anyway, it kind of ran out of gas for me. Great cast, great score, great action. Ben Kingsley as a really nasty bad guy is interesting to see. Pulling a faux American accent, which always bugs me because I can always detect it. And I'm always like, it's just, people are British. It's okay for him to be British. It, it, there are British people who live in this country. There are American people who live in England. It's okay for somebody to have an accent. I don't know why they do that. Anyway, uh, it was it was interesting. And uh, yeah, so anyway, what is there to say about the extras? There's a lot. Commentary by Howard S. Berger that's very fun and interesting. A different kind of spy game, visual essay by film critic and author Scott, I'm just, I'm basically reading what it says in the menu. A critic and author uh, Scout Tafoya looking at Fear is the Key, its place in 70s cinema, and how it sits with other adaptations of novels by Alistair McLean. That's very interesting, it's 23 minutes. Fear in the Key of Bud. Uh, it's an appreciation of composer Roy Budd and his score uh, by film historian and composer Neil Brand. That's great. That's 16 minutes. Producing the action archival interview with associate producer Gavrik Lozi about the car chases and stunts. Uh, that's a half hour. And it says archival interview. This may have just been done for a release by some other company somewhere else last year because the copyright on it's 2023, I believe. So it's a lot of times archival interview means it's from a long time ago or it's from the DVD or something like this, but it's not that old. And it's interesting where he talks about the stunt people. And I guess uh, Joey Chitwood, if you know Joey Chitwood, was involved with the stunts in this film. And he Joey Chitwood had this uh, automotive stunt team carnival that they would do like state fairs and stuff and just do insane car stunts for the crowds. I wish I could have been alive to see that back then. Uh, he did the stunt work and when I heard that his name was attached to the stunts in this film, I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, Bayou to Bray, archival featurette in which crew members look back at the making of the film. That's 40 minutes. And then you get the original trailer that really sells the action and the espionage and the suspense, and that's two minutes. So really fun release of a very obscure movie. I can see why it's obscure because it all doesn't quite come together as a whole, but what does work works really well. And Barry Newman these days is not like a marquee name. So a lot of the names that in the, are in this, I could see a Paramount or a modern company going, there's nothing to sell this to a modern audience. There's nothing to sell this, to sell the number of units that Paramount wants to be satisfied. But when a nice boutique label like Arrow can get a hold of this and put out a really amazing edition, honestly, more amazing than Paramount would have bothered with. Uh, we're, we're living in a wonderful time for home video. So from 1972, Fear is the Key, available on Blu-ray from Arrow Home Video.